True colors or a one-off? You be the judge. Greetings and welcome back to Here's What I Heard. I'm Laura Degatis, your hostess. Thank you for clicking on my little acre of the internet today. This week we're going to be talking about a Democratic senatorial candidate that has come across my feed with regards to her treatment of some preteen girls at a, at a party. This person, whose name is Abby Broyles, has been accused of berating preteen and teenage girls, being racially insensitive and bodily insensitive to these young ladies, getting very drunk, very belligerent, and then throwing up in one of the girl's shoes. Now, at first listen and at first glance to this, it sounds horrible. Actually, to be honest with you, from what I can tell, it is horrible. But we do get both sides of the story when it comes down to it, and I've got four different areas where we can actually find out whether or not this was a one-off or if this person is actually this way and the alcohol just melted away the controls that she usually has on it. Of course, she blames someone else for this as well. So, I'll start off with the article that started this. It's called nondoc.com. I've, I've never heard of it before, but this is actually what all of the other articles such as um, Blaze TV and Fox News actually referred back to this particular article. So, the headline says, Parents, 12-year-old says Abby Broyles verbally accosted kids at a Valentine party. And it actually ended up being a preteen slumber party at one of her well-known friends, somebody she went to college with. So, these were friends. Their kids were probably friends, if she has any. A Valentine's Day weekend sleepover party for tween girls that included watching the film Titanic turned bizarre and tearful after parents say Oklahoma 5th Congressional District candidate Abby Broyles allegedly became drunk and berated some of the children in attendance. The party, held at the home of a Deer Creek Public Schools parent on February 11th, included eight girls between the ages of 12 and 13. Broyles was allegedly at the home the night of the party at the invitation of the homeowner, who is the mother of one of the children, naturally. Now, it doesn't say here whether or not Broyles has any children or anything like that, but it doesn't actually sound like she did. Or does. Uh, according to multiple accounts of the evening, Broyles became intoxicated and spoke derogatorily to some of the girls. She allegedly called one girl an acne fucker, which promoted the girl to leave the gir leave the room in tears. Any 12 to 13 year old girl with acne probably is extremely sensitive about it. And of course, uh, kids making fun of it is enough, but you've got an adult that's going to make fun of it and that's going to be hurtful. That's, that's not going, that's not right. That's just not right. Not to mention the fact that this isn't even your child. Royals allegedly called another girl a Hispanic fucker and another a judgy fucker. At one point, Broyles allegedly vom vomited into a laundry basket and onto one of the girl's shoes. Sarah Matthews, whose daughter attended the party, outlined some of Broyles' alleged behavior in a Twitter thread. That's right. Take it to Twitter. That's all you have to do. Take it to Twitter. Wednesday that tagged Broyles' account. Matthews was not present, but was told of the alleged events by her daughter and the mother who hosted the party. Both Matthews and her 12-year-old daughter discussed the situation thoroughly with Nondoc. Another parent who asked not to be named corroborated the story based on details provided by her daughter after the party. Text messages from the homeowner outlining and apologizing for Boyles' action were also provided to Nondoc by multiple people. In a phone conversation, the homeowner also confirmed to Nondoc that Broyles had caused an incident of magnitude at her home. Of magnitude. Well, it would I would venture to say again that it's the 
the uh, probably the racial comment, Hispanic fucker comment. Uh, first of all, why are you cursing at 13 year olds, 12 year old and 13 year olds? Don Doc also obtained two photographs of Boyles, a picture of her drinking wine in a kitchen next to two girls, and a screenshot of her in a TikTok video posing with four girls, three of whom are wearing matching pink pajama outfits adorned with hearts. Yes, they're very young. <laughs> Matthew said that she is still shocked by her daughter's account of what happened. Yeah, I think I would be too. Some woman that's supposed to be chaperoning ends up being the person that needs to be chaperoned. It is so sad because this is someone who has stood on a soapbox and talked about empowering women. And rather than do that with these girls, she chose to belittle and denigrate the next generation of women, Matthew said. And she does this at a time when their bodies are changing and their features are changing and they are very vulnerable. Yes, <laughs> I remember those years. My parents used to always tell me, you're always so moody, you're always so moody. Well, you couldn't help it. The hormones were raging. There was absolutely nothing you could do about your gangly body or any of the things were happening to you, such as acne. Now, I never had that problem. But um, my arms actually reached down to my ankles at one point. I, <laughs> I seem to think that's what it looked like in some of the pictures that I've taken back then. Uh, yes, I was very, very conscientious about my body for several reasons. But all teenage girls are, especially at that age. Reached early Thursday, Broyles flatly denied the allegations and said she was not at the house that evening. She eventually said she was out of town. I saw the tweets. I've been out of town on a fundraising trip and they are awful and offensive and false, Broyles says. I mean, I get trolled on Twitter all the time, but I don't know these women and I don't know what is behind this, but it's just not true. Asked if she even gone to the house where the slumber party occurred, Broyles said no. I don't want to talk about, I mean, this is ridiculous. That is, that this is becoming a thing, Broyles said. This didn't happen. Broyles announced her candidacy for Democratic Party's 2022 nomination for the 5th Congressional District in September. U.S. Representative Stephanie Bice, Republican, was first elected to the seat in 2020. Broyles unsuccessfully challenged incumbent U.S. Senate uh, Jim Inhofe in 2020, capturing 32% of the vote. Soon after, Broyles launched a non-profit called Grif, sorry, Grit for Democracy. You might as well put the F in there, though. To increase voter participation and ensure every Oklahoman from every walk of life is seen and heard. Yes, whenever a Democrat does anything like that to increase voter participation, you know they're not registering Republicans for anything. Okay. <laughs> uh, an attorney and former KFOR reporter who attended law school with the host of the sleepover, Broyles threatened to sue Nondoc for reporting the claims against her. So, not only is it not true, but she's going to sue. Shame on you, according to her. I'm running for office. You don't think this is a political attack? You don't think this is something they cooked up? Broyles said. Really? Hmm. They do it so often that uh, they think everyone else is doing it to them, too. I guarantee you. Uh, and, and actually, according to some of the things that I've read about her, she actually was successfully able to uh, report on some kind of corruption with her predecessor or the person she was going against, Jim, Jim Inhofe. I'll get to that in a minute. Asked if she meant that 12 and 13 year old girls had cooked up a story against her for political purses, purposes, Broyles said she meant their moms. I mean, I don't know, Broyles said. I have no idea. This is I'm just telling you, it's not true. And if I were a journalist, I would not be doing a story because it's not a story. <laughs> she was a journalist, though. Supposedly. She actually worked for the radio, for the television station that you're getting ready to see her do an interview with over this. She actually did answer the questions afterwards. Matthews, who tagged media and Bice's accounts in her Twitter thread, expressed frustration after being told that Broyles, Broyles denied the incident had occurred. 
I find it grotesque. She was 100% there. These children were 100% abused by her verbally and emotionally, Matthew said. The fact that she's trying to hide it or act like it is no big deal is disgusting. Particularly for someone in her position who tries to present herself as so pro-woman. She was telling me I wasn't going to be as successful of her, quote unquote. Matthew's 12-year-old daughter directly detailed her experience at the sleepover. Non-doc has withheld her name from this article. Well, that's good. You don't usually put minors in an article like that. Uh, she's the last person you want to dox, even accidentally. You know, it's pretty bad what Broyles did, but you don't need the rest of the internet all over her either. The daughter said that Broyles was initially pleasant before becoming upset without provocation. It really just happened, the 12-year-old said. It was like it was a switch and she started being rude to people. Early in the evening, she had been nice. The party attendee said Broyles seemed to be angry at everyone there. We were sitting around and she was just going around in a circle saying rude things that would end in there with effort and saying F you to all us there. Really rude things, the 12-year-old said. My friend has acne and she had been talking about her acne early in the evening and then Broyles called her an acne effer and she ran upstairs crying. The attendee said she eventually became the target of Broyles' pronouncements. She was telling me I wasn't going to be as successful as her, the 12-year-old said. That statement right there, in my opinion, tells me that's her true colors. This is her true colors. Without the, the what, what is it that alcohol takes away? The, the inhibition. Without the inhibitions of her normal self and not being affected by alcohol. Because she explains it later and that's actually what was involved. And they said she was drunk and she threw up. But that right there, usually when an inhibition of alcohol is taken away, you get true colors from people. And that statement right there told me this is her true colors. She's another one of these uh, journalists that have come from a television state station after being lauded with praise and all of the awards that she's gotten for this supposed uh, journalisming on corruption and things like that. Uh, one of which was against her competition the first time she ran for office. I mean, come on. Is this obvious or what? Is this too obvious or what? But <laughs> so again, that particular statement to me tells me that this is her true colors. But we'll go on. Like I say, you deserve to hear both sides of the story. Well, the girl said she was offended at Broyles' remarks. She said she chose not to respond because she was scared of what Broyles might say or do to her. So this lady already had them frightened of her and then she was berating them and, and making fun of them and that's, what, what are you, a mean girl? Did you go back to high school or something? Was this, you know? Later, the same attendee said that one of the girls attempted to return a pair of eyeglasses she believed belonged to Broyles's. When asked if the glasses were hers, Broyles allegedly said that they were the Hispanic fuckers in reference to a girl at the sleepover. A text message from the homeowner to Matthews the next day corroborates many of the events. The text message included an apology. It obviously happened and obviously the homeowner was mortified. Otherwise, I don't think she would have felt the need to do any of this stuff. Hey, I'm available to talk or address last night in any way if it can help. The girls or the parents wrote the homeowner. I have no excuses and it's sick, honestly. If I can confirm the nasty words or recount the incident, I'm willing to. I don't know how to best handle it and I imagine each parent and child may need or desire different things, but if it was me, I would like to hear that at least. The homeowner who donated $2,550 to Broyles' 2020 U.S. Senate campaign, according to the federal records, told Matthews she was happy to meet with the parents as a group or individually to discuss the incident. Uh, yeah, although the thing is, is they're discussing it with the wrong person. The homeowner can only do so much. It wasn't her that, you know, she invited the lady, but it's not like she had any control over what was going to come out of this lady's mouth or what was going on. Uh, she might not have known, 
you know, even though they've known each other for years and years and years and everything like that, they went to college together. She might not have known what her her uh, state of mind was at that particular time in, in history. Nobody's, nobody's that consistent. Unfortunately, it really was as bad as it sounds, the homeowner wrote. She went from zonked out to attacking kids. Non-doc con contacted the homeowner who confirmed that the incident occurred at her house and involved her friend, Abby Broyles, whom she had met in law school. The homeowner asked not to be identified. Yes, no doxing. No doxing. You don't want to dox these people. I can confirm that an incident occurred of the kind of magnitude that I needed to make phone calls to every parent of the children in attendance the next day to discuss one-on-one, -on -one, parent to parent, the homeowner said. The homeowner's ex-husband, Coy Reed, confirmed that his former spouse and their daughter relayed the story to him. Okay, so they give you his name, but not hers. You're going to know who she is. <laughs> well, some people are going to know who she is now because I'm sure that they knew the, the couple. My reaction was, I just wanted to vomit, Reed said. My heart was broken. My ex did a great job of throwing the party and did it all up. It sounds like it was a great evening until it wasn't. How profound. I feel terrible for the girls and I feel terrible for my ex. Told that Broyles was denying that the incident occurred, the homeowner expressed shock. Let's handle this aftermath because it was that large of an incident to me, she said. But to deny it occurred would be blatantly wrong. I'm so sorry they were accosted. In her text message to Matthews, the homeowner wrote that Broyles had brought two bottles of wine to her house. Not excusing anything at all, the homeowner wrote, I'm just so, so sorry the girl saw anything like this ever, and I'm mortified that it was someone who's been around my kids dozens of times and knows that my children are the center of my world. Well, as like I say, the alcohol, alcohol takes away those inhibitors. People start saying all kinds of stuff. There's nothing more truthful than a child or a drunk. The homeowner concluded her text message with her own recollection of the events of the night. The girl's faces as a grown woman slurred speech and puked in a hamper is burned in my mind, she wrote to Matthews. I'm so sorry they were accosted. Matthews said she was only partially familiar with Broyles before the incident. Matthews said that the that while Broyles is not a candidate for whom she likely would have voted, her decision to speak out is not political. I didn't know anything about her other than she used to be on the news and had run for office, Matthew said. I follow politics, but I'm not involved in politics. The only involvement I have in politics is voting. I'm not sure if I would have done anything had she apologized and said, this behavior is disgusting, it's inexcusable. But to just completely ignore it is gross. I agree. And again, she since she was running for office, uh... Well, you'll see what she claims. Like I say, we're going to see the other side of the story here. Matthews' 12-year-old daughter said Broyles attempted to apologize that night, but the homeowner did most of the talking. Matthews said the girls were asked to delete photos and videos of the incident from their phones. Again, another indication that this is her true colors, and she's trying to save her ass at this point. Somebody is. She stayed overnight and there wasn't any discussion the next morning. The attendee said, I could tell she was embarrassed to say anything to us. Yet she didn't. And she lied about it when someone else confronted her about it. Again, in my opinion, this is her true colors. The 12 year old said what happened was not something she thought she would see at a party with friends. Well. Now you have and you can expect it or you can you can actually expect anything to happen at any party at any time now. You've gotten some life experience and just gotten an indication of just how bad some people can be. It was really just crazy because I've never seen anyone act like that, the girl said. Yeah, of course not. You're 12 years old for crying out loud. You hang out with middle school people and, and probably your parents. Your parents are going to act like that in front of you if they've got any kind of decency whatsoever. And you, you know. <laughs> so yeah, at 12 years old, I wouldn't have expected you to see anything like that. You shouldn't have actually been seeing anything like that until you're 16 or 17 or even maybe 18 or 21. It just seems like really weird to 
the way she was acting and just mean. It was really, I was really surprised by it. It just happened and she started acting aggressively. Yeah, for a 12 year old. All right. So Breitbart, or excuse me, Blaze is actually the, the article that came across my desk or across my feed, which led me to the non-talk article that I just read to you. Democratic House candidate allegedly goes on abusive drunken tirade, vomits during preteen sleepover. First she denies it, then she says it was she wasn't in her right mind when it happens. This is actually the update that this is after the update. I'm not going to read you this whole article because it's actually now time to hear her side of the story. She uh, gave uh, a, an interview to the local news station that she used to anchor in, and here's what she had to say. Thank you. This afternoon, I sat down with Abby Broyles to ask what in the world happened the night of that party. Abby, how did you wind up at a slumber party for middle school girls? That's not a typical venue for a candidate who's running for Congress. I was invited by one of my great friends, Cassidy, um, my friend from law school, to her house to be um, there while she was hosting a Valentine's Day sleepover for her daughter, who I'm also close with. Um, she was the only parent there that night, and we're good friends, and I'm over at their house quite a bit, have known them for years, and so it was no big deal for me to go and, and stay during a sleepover, and the girls and I had a great time. I think there's a TikTok video out there <laughs> of us at the beginning. In the past 24 hours, there's been a lot of documentation about what happened out there. And from what I've read, that's not the Abby Broyles I worked with at Channel 4. What happened? She asked me to come over. She asked me to bring some wine. We had wine and sushi. And then uh, a couple hours later, we were upstairs in their theater room watching a movie. For years, I have struggled with stress and anxiety and insomnia. I... Oh, there we go. Oh, here she is now. She's the victim all of a sudden. We'll go on. Took, I took the bar exam on two hours of sleep. I mean, this is how far this goes back for me. And she knows that. And so? she gave me a medication I had never taken before. And I had an- Wait, wait, wait. She gave you a medication you'd never taken before. Did she force it down your throat? You couldn't say no? Not to mention the fact that you're the only person that has mentioned this in any of the reports that I've looked at. You're the only person that's blaming her for giving you a medication. And you drank it with wine as well? Uh, this doesn't sound like a person I want in Congress. If they don't know well enough to not drink with a medication that they don't even know what it is? I'd be asking a few more questions here. Adverse reaction. Instead of helping me sleep, I hallucinated. And I don't remember anything until I How woke convenient. up or came to and I was throwing up in a hamper. So you're saying the wine and the medication you were given reacted in a way that you behaved in a way that you usually wouldn't and you don't remember it. I don't. I remember starting to hallucinate and the rest is just blurry. I just remember opening my eyes and I had gotten sick in this hamper and I didn't know where I was. It was the most awful experience that I've had. Oh yes, it was so awful for her. Meanwhile, she made everybody else miserable, but it was awful for her. Again, she's turning herself into the victim. This is another one of those reasons why, like I say, you deserve to hear her side of the story, but this is also another one of those reasons why I believe these are her true colors. I'm not saying you're not being truthful, but you know, there are people out there watching right now saying, come on, she blacked out and doesn't remember. What do you say to those people? I'm not saying that I don't believe you, but I think that everyone else in the world would. I love him. <laughs> First of all, I want to apologize to the families again. Which and is all they wanted. To say, I just blacked out and I'm making this up. You don't know me. I have never, ever would say something hurtful like those things. Oh, I'm so sorry. There's the tears. Please forgive me. I'm crying my eyes out for you. Which really, like you say, in most cases, doesn't mean anything. She'd been busted on it. She's having to talk about it. And she may feel a little bit, but again, I don't think so. This is almost 
too perfectly timed. And don't forget, she used to anchor on this TV show that she's doing this interview with now. So that means that she's an actor. She's an actor. Most politicians these days are. And that's why I know I was not in my right mind. I know that that's what happened because of that combination of things. And I, I deeply, deeply regret it. Do you have You're the a only one that knows. Of any kind of substance, alcohol or anything like that, do you feel like you do? No. She's not going to admit it to you if she does. You know, and like I say, this could be something that's actually now coming out from a problem. She's already admitted to you that she's had uh, anxiety and all these problems and everything since uh, college, which sounds to me like she put that pressure on herself, the bar exam and the law school and everything like that. That's not easy to go through. And even the most best prepared people in the world struggle through it. I guarantee you, especially with the pressures that they put on them and all the classes that they take all at one time. Believe me, I was in college. I didn't even have that much pressure and I felt pressure. Let's see what else she says. Well, let me just say this. You were a little girl that age at one time. You remember what it's like in middle school. What would you like to say to those young girls? I want to say sorry from the bottom of my heart. I apologize for any hurt or damage or trauma that my behavior when I didn't know what I was doing caused. I'm deeply sorry. Now let's talk about some of the reports. You're the only one that can be. And again, conscious of it or not, you did the deeds. You need to be responsible. So I accept her apology as far as that goes. You know, I just wish that their side would accept apologies once they come up with something that they've come up, but it's never enough for them. So like I say, I'll accept your apology, but I'm gonna be watching you from now on and everybody else in this area for this person, especially if she wants to be in charge of their their representation needs to watch her because this to me based on the information that I've got here and the things that I've looked at because I've seen four or five different things I believe that these are her true colors I could be wrong I'm not an expert on this stuff but I do know people and I have dealt with people like this and I also know she's an actor you saw her come up with all kinds of different emotions just in this three minute interview she's an actor reports because uh initially you told the reporter that you weren't even there but now we know you were why did you originally deny it i was misquoted in the non-doc article i never told him that is a lie this is another reason why i believe this was her true colors and now you can tell and you're gonna be able to tell she's trying to save her candidacy, which to be honest with you, I think this has probably ruined it, at least for this year. This was on a phone call and I never told him that I wasn't there. I said it didn't happen because he was asking about these allegations and I had no idea because again, I don't remember this episode. The non-doc reporter actually recorded her. You'll see in a minute. At all. It, it seems like this may have damaged the campaign beyond repair. How do you feel about that? I deeply regret what happened because of the people who it affected. I'll be okay no matter what happens, but as far as this campaign, I'm never going There's another statement that tells me these are her true colors. And she knows she's gonna be able to get away with it just with an apology. It always happens to the Democrats or for the Democrats going to stop fighting for Oklahomans, whether it's in yeah, this she's not going anywhere. fighting for the cause. I don't care what you tell way. me. I'm going to keep going. As for the statement that Abby Broyles was misquoted in the non-doc article, we contacted the reporter who wrote the story. He said he stands by his reporting. He also allowed us to listen to a taped conversation where Abby Broyles did deny being at the party that night. Yeah, you guys didn't think she was going to come clean when some reporter called her over the telephone for it. And they're, they're, not, they're never honest with the press, any of the press. In fact, also the press the themselves are not court. very honest when it comes right down to this kind of thing. Had anyone else gotten a hold of this before non-doc did, it would have been, a, it would have been a candy caned or puffed or we wouldn't have seen it at all. 
Just to give you an idea of who Abby Broyles actually is, she has a LinkedIn page. Now, I don't have a LinkedIn page, but she has enough information on the very front here. In fact, I think they tell you they tell you a lot of this stuff to actually get you to join to connect with these people. In fact, there's there there's a button right underneath where they where she explains who she is. Attorney, award-winning journalist, founder of Grit for Democracy, former US Senate candidate. Hmm, former, huh? I wonder when that was changed. She's got over 500 connections and she lives in the Oklahoma City metropolitan area. 2020 Democratic nominee for U.S. Senate in Oklahoma, former news anchor and reporter, lifelong Oklahoman. And of course, the report, she was a reporter for the TV station that she did this interview for, for. This is one of the things that really blows my mind about her. If nothing else, she was extremely, extremely ambitious. She went to the Oklahoma City University Law School from 2016 to 2019. Bef and before that, she uh, graduated from the California Baptist University. Uh, she was an associate producer. She started at age 20, supposedly, at this uh, KWTV. Associate producer, which is usually just an ass assistant to the producer. Then she went almost immediately, within six months, to an anchor or reporter. In another year and six months, she was a news reporter. After that, another year and one month, they put her in her own show, an entertainment lifestyle show anchor. Again, actor. An actor. She's an actress. She was only there for a year and a month. Then, she was made the television news anchor and reporter for KFOR. She was there for five years and two months. And then, she was the president and CEO of Grit for Democracy, which actually she formed after she lost the election in 2020. And she's also director of community affairs for Jesse James Films. So tell me again. This is an actor. And if she acts that irresponsibly towards 13-year-olds, first of all, she probably shouldn't have had more than one or two glasses of wine to begin with in front of these young ladies. And the fact that you took a medication that somebody handed you that you had no idea what it is, you essentially are accusing that homeowner of roofing you, which I'm pretty sure didn't happen. You're the only person that mentioned this. And you're an idiot if you just took a medication and didn't know what the fuck it was. You're the idiot. People can give you anything. That doesn't mean you have to jam it down your throat. But I guarantee you, the homeowner didn't jam it down your throat either. Nobody made you take that medication. And if you didn't know what it was, shame on you for taking it with alcohol on top of everything else. And if it was supposedly a downer, you should have known better. Why do we want somebody representing us that doesn't have the responsibility even of her own self? All right. Were you not informed? Don't do drugs. You know, you may trust your friend, but your friend doesn't, your friend wasn't a doctor. She's not going to know how that affects you. And of course, on top of wine as well, you never mix alcohol and drugs. Never. Not that kind. Not for any reason. So, you know my opinion on this. I personally think that these are her true colors. A, she's an actor. B, she's Democrat. C, all the excuses and all the lies that she told during this. This was just a real simple thing. Uh, and again, like I say, she lied to the original reporter. She lied to the reporter. You could tell she lied to the reporter. Uh, especially after they came back. Now, he didn't confront her about it. In fact, you could see how uncomfortable he was even asking her these serious questions. Probably because she is a Democratic candidate for the House of Representatives. She wants to re represent OKC District 5, which is great. But is she the right candidate for the job? Personally, after seeing this, 
I think not. For two reasons. She literally voluntarily took a drug that she had no idea what it was and then turned around and blamed her bad behavior on the fact that her friend gave her that drug. I don't think she twisted her arm and I don't think that she uh, shoved it down her throat or forced her forced it on her. Not to mention the fact she's drinking a whole bunch of wine and everything in front of teenagers. Next we're going to be finding out that she offered it to one of them. But you probably won't hear that because A, again, she's still trying to cover her ass and save her campaign. But B, the girls were already scared of her. So this may not come out for years and years and years and years in one of them's therapy session. So again, you know what I feel about this. Let me know down in the comments or call me on Thursdays at 7 p.m. for the Talk To Me America live call-in talk show where you get to tell the world what you heard. Thursdays at 7 p.m. Central Time, 8 o'clock Eastern Time, and 5 o'clock Avocado Time. The world wants to know what you have to say, so call me and tell them like it is. Also, if you enjoy my work and you want to see me continue, a like, a subscribe, a comment, a share, and of course a donation would be the ultimate. You can also find all of my alternative links down below. Click on some of them, will ya? Thank you for clicking on my little acre of the internet today. Until next time.